let's uh I, what i want to start doing is is um separating my streams into sections like we're gonna do segments right so first part of the stream let's talk about this let's talk about the results of um i can never pronounce the sound sakakis <laughs> sikakis the jersey regional we'll call it the jersey regional let's start off with that let's talk about that let me go full screen here um but yeah so Emilio Forbes won. Congratulations to him. Uh, he had the Zacian, Caloric Shadow, uh, Incineroar, Gastrodon, Rillaboom, and Thunderous team. Honestly, pretty tried and true team, or tried and true. And it's it's just like a very solid archetype. I mean, like, uh, yes, does it hate Incineroar? Kind of, but not really when you have a Gastrodon to check it as well as Thunderous, which I would assume in this situation, I didn't get to watch the regional um, because I was, you know, stranded and busy. Uh, but yeah, there's a thunderous there. One would imagine it's defiant. What really interested me, what really interested me more than anything else is the fact that not one, but two Alchemy made it to top eight in this regional. And one would assume they're both running Decorate. What is the other reason to run Alchemy? Because it's cute? Because it's delicious? Yeah, that. But honestly, that's, that's super hype. Um, I would imagine that um, Alexander Hill and Justin Burns uh, both built together. You know, we have Calyrex plus Palkia. Uh, we have Incineroar, Rillaboom, uh, Alchemy, and Gothitelle. Gothitelle is honestly such a slept on Pokemon right now. If we just take a look at how Gothitelle functions in restricted formats. Remember, uh, if you guys know, I, I put out a tweet the other day saying, hey, uh, a good way to punish switching with Calyrex, if you want to just meme a little bit, is run Stealth Rocks in VGC. Even though it's like bad, it'd be a fun little meme to punish Incineroar switches. Okay, but what if they just can't? Gothitelle takes takes that question and or takes that idea and and asks the bold question: uh, What if they can't switch? And honestly, it took us long enough to get to this point. It took us way too long to get to the point where Gothitelle is good again. But yeah. Wolfie Glick uh, running uh, Lunaldon, a very good archetype in my opinion, very slept on in the current format. A lot of people don't like Lunala because you usually don't want to like Dynamax it. It's usually just gonna be like Meteor Beam plus Trick Room stuff. But honestly, putting Lunala on Groudon with Charizard is always gonna be great uh, because, you know, typically if you have a Groudon and an Incineroar in the Groudon's AV, it's gonna be able to deal with Calyrex Shadow pretty well. And not only that, but um, if the Calyrex Shadow doesn't uh, Dynamax, Wide Guard will block its moves out indefinitely, which is super cool. Uh, what do Decorator, they have the same team, uh, may a few moveset changes, Stealth Rock, Zard, Ruin Switches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lunaldon did go pretty hard, yes, yes, Mega Shuckle, Lunaldon did go pretty hard. Uh, taking a look at other teams, uh, in 4th, Paul Chua, uh, running a pretty similar archetype, we already know, like, here's the thing, like, it, it, Calyrex plus Palkia is, is a team that keeps getting, like, top eight, top four. It, like, hasn't gotten first yet, and that's the frustrating part. Let me open up a, a new tab. Let me open up a new tab. Let me show you the results of previous regionals and how Calyrex plus Palkia has done. Let's look at Lily. Calyrex plus Palkia, non-existent here, but we'll see it, I'm sure, at some point. Or is this just going to be the outlier? Okay, this is the outlier. Just no results for Calyrex Palkia there. Earth. Here it is. Calyrex Palkia, top nine. So it's it's in there, right? It's in it's in the high results. There's one there. I personally think it's a very good archetype. I don't know why it just hasn't been able to like get to that point. Uh, let's look at the GG tour. I actually don't know how this one went. Calyrex Palkia on third. Yeah, it, it's like there's always one. There's always at minimum one. Indianapolis, okay. Calyrex Palkia, third. And then the rest was like the other Calyrex besides uh, Aditya, and I think maybe one more was... No, yeah, one more. Uh, Liao. Like, there's, there's a couple of them, right? They're always in there. It's always like a consistent archetype, but it just doesn't quite cut it. And there was a lot of hype for it at the beginning of the format. A lot of people like Calyrex Palkia... Crazy, it goes crazy, and it just doesn't quite get there. That's what's frustrating, in my opinion. Because look, it literally got second and fourth. Did it have an adaptation in Gothitelle? Um, yes. Did it have an adaptation in Alchemy? Yes. Like that's that's super cool and novel. But like the archetype itself does so well versus a lot of things. 
Uh, under Trick Room, Palkia just absolutely annihilates Zacian with Max Quake. Uh, same with Calyrex, is able to deal with Zacian pretty well. Uh, Palkia switches in on Behemoth Blade about as well as most things would, uh, but it resists it, so that's really nice. Uh, the other, the, like the old versions of it, tended to have Mimikyu, which is always really good for just burning powerful Pokemon in the format like Groudon. Um, the lack of Wide Guard Pokemon means that you usually don't even have to Dynamax your Calyrex Ice. You can just spam Glacial Lance and pick up KOs here and there. Removing the ability to switch with Gothitelle might be what puts it over the top. I think Alchemy will probably be dropped in future archetypes for... I don't know what you'd put there. I think it desperately wants a Steel type, but I'm not even certain if that's what it needs. But yeah, like the fact that Alchemy and Gothitelle on like this archetype made it do so well is just insane. And even here, like even without that, you can have like a hyper offensive mode outside of Trick Room by running a freaking... Um... Wait, didn't Paul... Is Paul the guy... On Twitter, I saw this on Twitter the other day. Is Paul the one who locked like light screen Regieleki with like a life orb? I forget if that was Paul or someone else. And someone is is Paul the one who locked light screen Regieleki with life orb? Like it was dual screens but life orb. It wanted to do two things. Was that him or was that someone else? Let me know. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Livinghouse. Um, you know, very similar team to first place. In fact, identical. Uh, you know, just in terms of matchups and how well he played, that's what, you know, put him down here rather than up there. Uh, still top eight, which is incredible. Andrew Ding, another very consistent player, uh, running Zacian Kyogre, uh, very consistent archetype. Uh, we see, you know, Justin Burns once again, uh, and Santino Tar... I can never pronounce Santino's name. Santino Tarquino, uh, who... Tarquinio, who won uh, Players' Cup running uh, Groudon plus Calyrex Shadow. Very, very solid core. Uh, definitely doesn't like Incineroar as much as other teams, but the fact that you have such a hyper-offensive, like, option, like, it's just great. Now, it, it's no Incineroar 2, obviously. Incineroar 2 is the peak of Calyrex Shadow sets, and if you're not aware of what Incineroar 2 is, get on board. Get on board or go overboard. That's what I gotta say. But yeah, uh, beyond that, we see a lot of standard stuff. You know, we see, like, Zacian, Kyogre, um... Plus, like, yeah, just this archetype, I guess, right here. <laughs> Zacian, Kyogre, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Grimstar, Thunderous. It's always going to do It's always gonna do really good. Sometimes you can drop Thunderous for Zapdos. Sometimes you can drop a couple of things and switch it up. Like we see here, um, two very similar teams, uh, Jordan and uh, Siddharth, both running Zacian, Kyogre. Uh, however, Siddharth has an Amoongus and a Tornadus, where um, Jordan's actually got a... What's the difference here? He has a Grim Snarl instead, right? Yeah, he's got a Grim Snarl instead. So yeah, pretty cool. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty interesting regional. It's a little disappointing that immediately after the previous regional, we didn't see more of Calyrex Reshiram, which was so hype. It was so hype. But I think what's going to happen is there's going to be that one team that does incredible, and then people are like scared of it, so they're just going to like counter team it. And then people will, their, their confidence in using it in the next tournament is going to wane so much. And then it's just going to drop off the face of the earth. Um, and I guess at the end of the format, we'll see what really was the best team. Here's Joe running the same team he runs every time. Pro tip, if you want to beat Joe, use this guy right here. If you want to beat Joseph Ugarte, Joe UX9, he absolutely loves facing Kiram White. If he says otherwise, he's a liar. But yeah. Overall, very cool uh, results. I think this is a, a pretty nice... Honestly, it, it's always interesting. Uh, people were getting really scared with Rinya Sun. And I know we talk about that a lot on this channel. People were getting really scared about Rinya Sun running the format. Uh, but in in the end, you know, we found that it was just a very reliable team. But as teams get more reliable and more used, uh, they're going to drop off the face of the earth because people are scared to run them in tournaments. So yeah. We'll see at the end of the format when Worlds run, uh, when Worlds comes around, what's going to actually be the best team. Uh, and I'm actually really excited. I think this has been a very innovative format that uh, I think it, it doesn't quite get the uh, the recognition it deserves in that department. A lot of cool stuff has come out of this. So yeah.